All right, everyone, Alpha Core number one, Chuck Dixon, Joe Bennett. This is the spoiler review, the spoiler discussion, the spoiler, whatever you want to call it. But if I have to say spoiler again and somebody bitches at me about not having enough notice, let me say it. Spoilers, guys. We are here to talk about the nitty gritty of Alpha Core number one, man, and I am very excited. And if I look the same as I did in yesterday's video, is it's because it's about five seconds later that I'm recording this, maybe 10. I don't know. I didn't exactly time it. But with all of that being said, before you leave this video, please like it subscribe to the channel for me and ring the notification bell so you guys can keep up with what we talk about in the future of the Ripiverse. So let's get into it. All right, starting off with the first of the spoilers. The thing that really caught me in this book is the way that they are trying to work with the Alpha Core. The Alpha Core is essentially a newer branch of the Texas uh, or the Flores Park Police Department, right? And these guys are definitely not vigilantes. They're not allowed to be vigilantes. They're not even, they are in some cases by some of the other cops re referred to almost as lesser, right? They're called freaks by some of their other counterparts and they are there only to respond to threats if an accept is involved. They are on, they are essentially dogs on a leash and only to be let off the chain when another dog with a bigger bark than the normal cops have uh, gets let off the leash. And yeah, uh, you guys see what I'm saying? That was a bad analogy. They're only to involve themselves when accepts are involved, right? There were laws put in place. The, the faucet, I think the faucet act is what they said in the book. They're only to engage when accepts are involved. And Solar has a big problem with that. That's right, Brian Solar, the uh, the main guy of the Alpha Core right there, he's got a major issue with that. He's wondering kind of in the book, and you can see it in some of the artwork and things like that, and I really love the expressiveness that Joe Bennett gives to the characters. He's like, wait a minute, me stopping crimes that are happening before it gets worse is a bad thing? He actually says that in the book. You also start to see the difference between he and Ingrid and why they kind of had some crosswords with each other in Isom 2. You see, she wanted to be just a regular cop. She she wanted to be a regular cop and work herself up to detective. And so you're going to see this breakdown between the two of one trying to be the good cop that follows the rules exactly as they need to. And the other guy who's like, no, we have the power to stop these things. Why don't we? I love that dynamic in the team. As far as I can see, Braxwell doesn't have a whole lot to say in the book and He's kind of there to back up his buddy Solar. From what I could tell, I could be wrong. Maybe I write it wrong. The other thing that I love seeing in this book, my God, some of the brutal artwork. Like I said, this is a police procedural, but let's get to the page, right? Let's get to the one, and I think that you guys have seen this already. But let's get, oh my good Lord. I keep forgetting how big this book is. This is kind of ridiculous. But let's get to the page that just drops your jaw. That right there, okay? Villains are making plays, specifically Michael Copper and Lillian Ranashi. Now, there is some money in a vault. They wanna get that money out of the vault and shenanigans ensue because Michael Copper's plans don't exactly go the way that they want to. But then, step in Lillian Ranashi. It's okay, she gets tired of her counterpart going off and doing his stuff and not getting the job done that she steps in and i'm gonna be off honest um lillian's kind of terrifying guys they uh you get to see this absolutely fantastic sequence at the end of the book we'll talk about that but basically what's happening is here is they are that crime that happened in the beginning the guy who had a bomb strapped to his chest well he was supposed to go in and blow up uh, and blow up like a safety deposit room of a bank. Well, it seems he didn't get that far and the guy wasn't aware that the bomb was ready to go. He gets thrown in jail. Now he's a living person who is connected to Michael Copper. So now they send in some skeevy lawyer to go in 
And he connects two people, another criminal that gets thrown in, which it looks like some junkie that can shoot lightning, then gets tasked to go in and nuke the guy. And I mean, it was a brutal scene. And as the book goes on, it is the Alpha Core trying to uncover what Michael Copper and Lillian Renashi doing, not knowing that it was them. And then Michael Copper and Lillian Renashi trying to cover up their tracks that they kept leaving. And it culminates into bringing in new villains. It culminates into us seeing some fantastic pieces where we actually get to see how strong Brian Solar is. Like the guy, the, the guy is ridiculously strong. Probably the strongest we've seen in Isom so far, potentially. I don't know. The guy can take bullets. He can get magma thrown at him and he still feels it. It still hurts him but he's able to tank it in a lot of ways. Braxwell is fast moving, looks like he's a combat master and he can think on his feet. And Ingrid Valdez is very, very capable in a fight and she is also able to think as well. However, unlike Braxwell and Solar, Ingrid can't fly. It's even commented on. And then as the story goes, it ends up in their sky base which looks kind of like a turtle it looked like a turtle to me i don't know that's just that's what i i saw when i saw the sky base uh it just it very much has turtle turtle energy right well yeah that sky base gets dropped and i thought this was a really really great plot point because the entire book is how is the world going to deal with these freaks who are now on the police force and with people pushing propaganda like, oh, now these guys are here. The superheroes are going to get worse and escalate and then they're going to have to get worse and escalate to the villains. And then, you know, and then the it's going to go back and forth and it's going to be this escalating thing. And now the sky base drops out of the sky and wreaks havoc on Flores Park down below. And that sets us up for what is going to happen in this world moving forward with, I think, every single thing that's happening in Flores Park. Whether it's in Isom, Yaira, or Alpha Core, a sky base dropping out of the sky and taking out what looked to be a city block or two is not something that can be ignored and is definitely not something that is going to be easy for the public to get over. <laughs> there is one thing that I kind of had a little bit of an issue with, but it is the police procedural. And when I when I saw it and I was like, yep, still feels like NCIS. They skip over at the very end of the book, the part where the Alpha Core figures out uh, who was behind everything. And they go and they meet Michael Copper and Lily and Renashi, who are getting ready for a little bit of R&R &R and going on a vacay, as they call it. And uh, you go from this calamitous event that happened to some time has passed and they figured out who was behind everything. And they just meet them at the airstrip. And oh boy, does fun ensue. And you get to see Valdez be... A little bit less of a cop in that scene and it was really really fantastic um overall man there's there this there is a lot happening here in this book this definitely follows the beats of police procedural there are moments of tension there are moments of sadness i can't cover everything in this book but i think what i have covered at least from my perspective are the things that jumped out to me how this is going to affect the world of Isom, how this is going to tie into more and more and more stories that are coming. And to be perfectly honest, I'm here for it. This was a really, really good outing. And I mean, it's Chuck Dixon and Joe Bennett. Now, I'm not the guy who knows the most about Chuck Dixon, but I know what people have told me about him. I don't know the most about Joe Bennett, but I know what people have told me about him. And uh, you guys were right. You guys were absolutely right. So like I said in my spoiler-free review, God, I can't stop looking at it, dude. This artwork is just so freaking good. But as I said in my spoiler-free,
free review. This book here is a buy. Would I spend my hard earned dollars on it? Yes. Yes, I would. And so, ladies and gentlemen, hopefully you guys like the spoiler talk here. Let me know what you guys think down below. Seriously, if you got more spoiler talk, I am absolutely here for it. The other thing that I am going to prepare, because I think that we need to get back to true nerd culture, nerd debates. My hero can beat up your hero, guys. We're going to do a versus match. Truth, Justice, and American Way by Gabe El Taib versus the Alpha Core. I am going to do my best to put together a versus video going over their, well, their skills, what they can do, what we've seen them do so far. I don't know if I'll do the whole team yet. I don't know if I'm just going to do an individual character yet. I've got to get into that. But we need to get back to that stuff in the nerd world. And you know what? I got two three-person teams right here that I can do that with. So ladies and gentlemen, if you guys are here for that type of content, let me know what you think because it's time to get down to some good old fashioned nerd debates of who can kick whose ass. So ladies and gentlemen, as always, thank you so much for being here. And until next time, cheers everybody. Thank you all so much for checking out this video. And I would ask, beg, borrow and steal just to get you guys to click the links down in the description below to join my gilded server and my drinkwithcrazy.locals.com. Oh, and by the way, just in case you guys didn't know, I'm also over on Rumble as well, so click that link while you're down there. See you next time.